I'll be reading tonight from a, a recently completed manuscript which uh, takes up a story I began in a book called Boyhood that came out five years ago. Boyhood uh, followed the, the life of uh, a child with my name and with my birth date through the uh, South Africa of the 1940s and 1950s. And uh, the, the present book, Youth, takes up that story in the 1960s again with the same character. Um, when I presented the manuscript of Boyhood to my publisher, uh, he said he was very pleased with it, but wanted to know what genre it fell into, whether it fell into the genre of memoir or the genre of fiction. I, s I asked whether it could not hover in between. He said as far as he was concerned, that was fine, but it wouldn't work with the bookstores because they had fiction shelves and biography shelves, and it had to go in one or the other. Um, what is apparently happening with uh, youth from which I'll read this evening is that in the United States it will be marketed as fiction and in Britain as biography. Um, I read from towards the end of the, of the book. Um, the situation is the year is 1964 and we are in England where this uh, person is making a living as a computer programmer. Uh, do remember that the, 90, the early 1960s were really the infancy of uh, the computer and computers were very large and very expensive uh, machines. The job listings in the newspapers are full of appeals for computer programmers. England cannot, it would seem, find enough of them. Most are for openings in payroll departments. These he ignores, responding only to the computer companies themselves. Within days, he has had an interview with international computers and without hesitation accepted their offer. He is exultant. He is employed. He is safe. He is not going to be ordered out of the country. There is one catch. Well, I'm still in the world that you just presented to us, John. And since you didn't uh, get taken away with a white sheet over your face by an ambulance, um, I'm wondering how it is that you developed a stupid, insensitive doggedness to find destiny as a writer and how you made your way from what seemed like a terrifying impasse to the life of a writer. With the chronology, uh, Dusklands came out in 1974. That was my first, uh, first published fiction. Um, we, we've been talking about events of, of 63, 64. So there was another 10 years of dodging around and uh, evading destiny. Huh. How did you come to thaw the state of <laughs> cold, frozen inability to uh, risk failure? Was it finally a matter of persisting, um, reaching a further state of intolerability? What made the threshold crossable yes. um, as you gradually began to write? And I suppose I could attach to that uh, the question of whether it involved adjusting your sense of wanting to write as a poet, um, which I was fascinated to learn about, um, adjusting from there to making sentences um, as a fiction writer or as a novelist. Yeah. I gave up on poetry. Uh, I gave up on poetry in the, in the 1960s, um, but didn't cease to read it. Uh, and it's interesting, you know, people always assume that because you write novels, you, you like to read novels. Uh, I, in fact, write novels, but much prefer to read poetry. Um, and were there poets that were particularly 
important in those years that may have had an impact in terms of your gradually moving towards uh, writing and taking up the life of an artist after all? Well, I was very heavily under the influence uh, in my teens and early 20s of uh, first T.S. Eliot, but then more substantially Ezra Pound. Um, and then uh, later of, uh, of German poetry, of uh, Rilke in particular. Yes. 